morning, church. Yesterday I left the house to pick up these pair of glasses, and I remembered to wash my hands and sanitize them immediately after I left the optometrist's office. But today I'm going to take you to a passage in Luke, chapter 12, and we're going to take a look at something that I think is really pretty interesting. There's a guy in verse 13 who comes up to Jesus. Someone in the crowd, it says, came to him, teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. <laughs> now, I don't know what inheritance this is, of course, uh, but this guy is just basically saying, Jesus, I've got a brother, I've got an inheritance, and my brother isn't giving me my share, or my brother isn't giving me enough, or something, I don't know. But Jesus's reply is priceless. Verse 14, Jesus replied, man, who appointed me a judge or an arbiter between you? Then he said to him, watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Life does not consist in an abundance of possessions. Now, I'm going to stop there for just a minute. Because as we are living in this coronavirus weirdness that we're all experiencing, I've uh, listened to a number of people who are afraid of the disease. And then I've read a number of posts on Facebook and heard a number of people who are afraid of the economic impact. And I just want to let you know something. Jesus doesn't ever seem to be concerned with economic impact. Jesus seems to be concerned not with economic fairness or anything else that would result in an abundance of possessions. What Jesus is about to talk about in this passage is the simple fact that what you need is what you need. Not what you want, not what you could have. What you need is what you need and not, for lack of a better word, what you might greed. Jesus continues. He says these words. In verse 16, Jesus told them this parable. The ground of a certain rich man yielded an abundant harvest. He thought to himself, what shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, this is what I'll do. I'll, I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones. And there I will store my surplus grain. And I'll say to myself, you have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take life easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool, this very night your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? This is an interesting um, way Jesus is responding to this hypothetical person. This uh, man who has this uh, farm and he's got way too much food for himself. But his desire, his thinking, his plan is to save this food for himself for the long run. Now, we know from the book of Proverbs that saving is good. Proverbs would encourage us to use our wisdom to save our resources for those days when we don't have as much. Saving is good. There's just one thing. If you save for yourself and you are not thinking about other people, then Jesus would have a problem with that. Did you notice what Jesus said there at the very end of this parable? God says to the fool, this night your life will be demanded from you. And then this sentence, then who will get what you've prepared for yourself? I think the bigger point that Jesus is trying to make is that you don't own squat. You don't own anything. You don't actually possess anything. You yourself have under your control a lot of things, but you don't possess it because as soon as you're gone, it's still here and someone else will control it. Jesus ends his parable with sort of the moral of the story. He says this in verse 21, this is how it will be with whoever stores up things for themselves, but is not rich toward God. We're in this weird environment where people are hoarding things. I went to Target this last weekend because we needed some milk and we needed some juice. And so I went there, I had a scarf wrapped around my face and I'm hanging out there trying to maintain six feet of distance between me and everybody else. I'm trying to do the, the things that I'm supposed to do, but I'm looking around the place and like all of this food is gone. 
All of the canned goods are gone. Cheeses are gone. There's a limit on how many eggs you're allowed to buy. And I'm just thinking to myself, what in the world just happened? How in the world did all the grocery stores in this area suddenly just lose all of their stuff unless people are taking more than what they need? But isn't that the way we operate all the time? When we come to places of uncertainty and fear, we take care of ourselves first. When we come to places of uncertainty and fear, we take care of ourselves first. And we hoard, we grab, we take. Whatever we can get, we just, we just accumulate as much as we can. But actually, that's the way we live all the time. We always live in this constant state of fear of what, what's going to happen to me if I lose out on my opportunities? What, what's going to happen to me? And so we fear this. We worry about this. And so we hoard. We're greedy. We, we accumulate. We take. And Jesus says, this is how it's going to be with whoever stores up for themselves and is not rich towards God. Well, how, how do you be rich towards God? One way to be rich towards God is to take the resources that you have and give them to the people that God cares for. When we continue to be generous, even in the midst of uncertainty, that's something that really pleases God. He wants us to be rich towards him. Just to put some icing on this cake, Jesus tells a few more things to his crowd in the rest of these verses. I'm going to read them to you. You've heard them before. Verse 22, then Jesus said to his disciples, therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or about your body, what you will wear, for life is more than food, and the body is more than clothes. Consider the ravens, they do not sow or reap, they have no storeroom or barn, yet God feeds them. And how much more valuable you are than birds. Who of you by worrying can add a single hour to your life? And since you cannot do this very little thing, why do you worry about the rest? Consider how the wild flowers grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, how much more will he clothe you? you of little faith. And do not set your heart on what you will eat or drink. Do not worry about it. For the pagan world runs after all these things, and your Father knows you need them. But seek first his kingdom, and all these things will be given to you as well. Listen, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, but Jesus, this is coronavirus time. This is something that's never really happened before in the history of modern society. This is something we don't know how to deal with. How can you say, don't worry about your food? How can you say, don't worry about what you will eat or drink when the grocery stores are empty? How can you say this, Jesus? How can you say, don't worry? Let me just remind you of something. Jesus lived in the day of actual famine. Famines were a regular thing. They actually happened. People literally starve to death. And Jesus is the one who says, don't worry about what you will eat or drink. The people he's talking to are literally worried every single day of whether they will have enough food or not. And Jesus says, don't worry. That's a bold claim. It's a bold claim. Unless you think you can trust Jesus. Unless you think maybe when he said that we have a small faith, he was telling the truth. Unless you think that maybe Jesus was telling the truth when he said, seek first the kingdom of God and all these other things will be given to you as well. Listen, there are people in this world who are going through hardships. There are people in this world who are really worried about their food. But guess what? I'm not. And because I'm not, I can take what I have and I can give it to others. Because I'm not worried, I can be generous. Because I'm not worried, I can give. And if you are worried, perhaps you need to be connected with the body of Christ so that when you have a need, they can meet it. And when you don't have a need, you can meet someone else's. Here's the point. 
Let us be people during this time who rise above the worries and the fears. Let us be people during this time who recognize that God is in charge. He's the one who owns all the stuff. And let us be people at this time who display an attitude of gratitude, grace, generosity, so that we can be the people who demonstrate the love of Jesus in this world. Listen, I know you can't really interact face-to-face with a lot of people these days, but you can still represent Jesus well in everything you do. Be that today. Bless the world. Let me pray for you. Lord, I ask that you would be with us and help us to be people who represent Jesus well, that we would not be worriers and accumulators and people of greed, but that we would be people of gratitude and trust, putting you and your kingdom first and relying on you for all that we need. Lord, help us to trust you more. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Trust him well today. Represent him well today. God bless you. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.